Hi everyone and Happy New Year! Welcome to my full face of ultimate favourite products of 2023 where I show you the application process of all of my ultimate favourite products so you can see how they apply, what they look like on my skin and why they are my ultimate favourite products because they are all absolutely stunning. Anyway, I'll not only be applying all the products I've previously spoken about within this series of videos, I'll also be applying the products that I have yet to mention. So my ultimate favourite primers, powders, highlighters, setting sprays, lip products will all be featuring in this video as well. So if you have been wondering what my ultimate favourite products are in those categories, you will find out in this video. So we're going to get straight on with it. If you are enjoying what you're watching or finding it helpful throughout any of this video, I would really love it if you'd hit the like button and come and join the family by clicking the subscribe button and the notification bell. Let's kick it off with brows. I've got my WB Co Soap Brows with Extra Strong Hold. This is absolutely amazing. Just spritz that with a little bit of water. Take my Anastasia Beverly Hills 7B brush, which is just an amazing brush. It's got a spoolie on one end and it's also got a brush on the other, which I'm going to use in just a second to fill in my brows with my ultimate favourite brow powder. So just going to get this through the brows. The reason I like this so much, and I've gone through so many different brow products this year that have become my favourites, and then I've always gone back to this one because this has ultimate hold and it is so quick and easy to apply. It's just absolutely fantastic. You do have to clean up with this, unlike some other brow products. This does leave a slight residue on the surface of the skin if you are a bit messy like I am, but I like to apply quite quickly and then just clean up with my finger. No need to go in with any sort of cleansers or anything. A finger will do. Then I'm going to fill in my brows using the Benefit Goof Proof Brow Powder with the same Anastasia Beverly Hills 7B brush, just using the other end, the little brush, which is incredibly fine, meaning you can still create hair-like strokes if that's what you want, or you can just block fill them in if you prefer something slightly bolder. It's really strange me doing this video today and saying Happy New Year right at the very beginning of the video because I know it's the new year for all of you, that's when this video will go live. It's still mid-December here so we're not even over the Christmas hump but um, I'm really, really looking forward to it. You can make your brows as dramatic as you want to with this product. It's very quick and easy to use. I'm going to leave it looking semi-natural today because I don't want it to be too in your face. Next up is primer. This is the YSL Touche Clap Blur Primer and blur it seriously does. So this has some shimmer particles within the formula which annoy me slightly because this is what put me off buying this in the first place. I guarantee you this is not like applying an illuminating or radiant primer to your skin. This is incredibly blurring. It just makes your skin look like skin. It's not flat matte. It's not overly fake looking like some primers can make your skin. All you need to do is apply one pump on the back of your hand and then just apply it in tiny little sections just where you need it really, but I'm gonna apply it to one side of my face and just show you the difference that it makes because it really is something special. Just apply little bits at a time. I have my skincare on my skin, so I don't need masses of this. It feels quite silicony on the skin. It gives your skin that little bit of slip so a little does go a long way and I found out the hard way not to over apply this product. The reason I love this though, when I actually went to the YSL counter when she was showing me this, I was buying my YSL All Hours Foundation and uh, had to buy this at the same time because 
she just used it with everything so she put this in her liquid blush she put this in the liquid bronzer and it just makes everything more blurring it's stunning how it works it really is so this is the side without primer you can see all my texture it's quite shiny in areas it looks slightly unflattering around this area around my nose area there as well the corner of my eye and then this is the side with primer just everything is blurred and yet my skin is still allowed to look like skin it still has that radiance poking through it's just way more flattering you can apply this into your foundation into your concealer if you want a slightly more blurred smoother edge to your concealer and your foundation it can be applied in any liquid product or underneath any product just love it moving on to bronzer i tend to use this as my bronzer and my contour apart from my nose contour i'm going to use something completely different for that but this is makeup by mario and it is the soft sculpt shaping stick i have no idea why i keep forgetting the name of this product because it is the one that i've used for a good year now i use this every single day without fail and Look how much product it's got left. So this has had a lot of use. Lasts a really long time. This year we've had a change in the top spot of my ultimate favorite foundation. This is the Guerlain Terracotta Latan Foundation. I still absolutely adore my Clé de Peau. There is nothing that compares to my Clé de Peau for the blurring capabilities and the smoothing capabilities and the airbrushing capabilities. However, I get a lot of stick every time I choose that foundation, even though I can't lie. It's probably always going to be my ultimate favorite. Every time I try it, I go, oh, however, this one is very, very close. It's just gorgeous. This is in the shade 0N and uh, I'm going to apply it with my Refer 35 brush, which is a really small brush to begin with and then go in with a larger brush, the Zoeva 104 brush, to do the larger areas. I like to apply it with a small brush first, just so I don't get too much product in the areas that are slightly difficult to blend out like round my brows. Obviously I've already done my brows so I don't want anything messing those up. A lot of people don't understand why I do my brows first but I don't like getting any foundation within the brow hairs because I just think that makes things very, very difficult and my brows can look a bit cakey and unnatural throughout the day if that happens. So I prefer to do my brows first, get those out of the way and then apply the rest of my products. The reason I love this foundation so much is the coverage is excellent, although you can sheer it out a little bit, you'll get medium to full coverage from this. And even though you can get full coverage, it still looks like skin. There's that beautiful natural radiance to this and it never looks heavy on me at all. But also there's a lot of workability within the formula. So it's not like Estee Lauder Double Wear where you have to work in sections on your skin because it dries down super, super fast this is very beginner friendly you can pop dots all over the skin and blend it out if that's how you like to apply your foundations without having to worry that you're going to get little polka dots on the skin and it's going to be difficult to blend even though this has a radiant finish this really does blur all my imperfections and it doesn't highlight my texture again which i absolutely love and this is a long wearing formula so this is going to last me from first thing in the morning and it is first thing in the morning here and i know it will be still beautiful come the end of the day there will be no foundation missing on my skin doing a little bit of extra contouring on my nose my nose is lopsided i'm not sure if anybody's ever noticed of course you have i know you have but i do like to make it look a little bit straighter this is the victoria beckham contour stylus i was a little bit disappointed when this first came out because it is extremely expensive for the amount of product that you get however i've used hardly any i do only use it to contour my nose but again just like the makeup by mario i use this daily and 
so much left so it does last a long time if you are going to use it as forehead contour and also cheek contour this is obviously not going to last you as long but um, yeah, I really like it. Moving on to eyes, we are gonna be using the I Need A Nude palette from Natasha Denona. I love this color story. Taking a small fluffy brush going into the shade Mesh, just winging out the outer portion of my eye and then connecting it above the crease. I always like to go above the crease on this outer edge because the outer portion of my eye, that little flap of skin is getting heavier and heavier and heavier the older that I get and this just adds a lifted effect to that outer corner and disguises that flap of skin a little bit. I am going to blend everything out with a larger fluffy brush. Just love this colour story. Love the fact that every individual shade is super wearable for either daytime or evening. You can judge this up, make it more dramatic if you want to with this palette. It's just a lovely, lovely palette. Taking a fluffy brush and just very, very lightly blurring out all those edges just to make sure that we have a seamless blend and it doesn't look too blocky. Moving in with the shade Tender, just to deepen off that outer corner. Only using a tiny bit of this shade. I don't want to deepen it up too much, but I just want to add a little bit more drama. Then I'm going to pop my favorite shade in this entire palette on my entire lid. Look how beautiful this shade is. It's the shade Muse and I'm just popping this in the center of the lid, just dabbing it in place. I mean, come on, it's just gorgeous. Finally, using my Refa 29 brush, which is my favorite eye brush, I'm gonna dip into the shade Silhouette and just create a rough liner, which I'm gonna wing out at the outer corner, just slightly. And it's as simple as that. So quick and easy to use this brush, even if you have an unsteady hand. Let's cover over those under eye circles. Concealer always could do with a little bit of a helping hand when it comes to under eye circles. Don't expect your concealer to do all of the work. So uh, I like to add a color corrector underneath my eyes, just on the areas of darkness to just help out my concealer a little bit, hold its hand. Just applying a little bit, just over those severe areas of darkness, and then my concealer doesn't have as much to do. That only needs to dry down for a couple of seconds before I go in with concealer. The concealer that I'm gonna to use today is the Giorgio Armani Power Fabric Plus Concealer in the shade 3.5. Just gonna pop a little bit on the back of my hand and as per usual, go in with my finger. Just over the areas of darkness first, let that sit there for a minute or two, just to start to dry down before I blend it in properly. You can do that with this concealer and it won't look cakey or heavy. So I'm just gonna let that sit for a second. Obviously it looks very silly at the moment but letting it dry down a little bit will help with the coverage. So it's had a minute, and then I'm just going to blend that all the way underneath the eye. And then if I need to go in with a little bit more, I can do just on the areas that need it. Do I need it? I don't think I do, I'm gonna leave it there. So there's less product underneath my eye than if I'd used my Lancome All Over Concealer because I would definitely have had to go in with a second layer with that particular concealer, but because this one has slightly more coverage, one layer will do. Moving on to highlighter. I'm not usually a highlighter sort of person. I don't reach for highlighter on a daily basis, but I have two ultimate favorites, which is surprised me slightly because usually I can't pick one ultimate favorite and now two have come along at once and I just can't make my mind up. So we've got the Charlotte Tilbury Glowgasm Beauty Light Wand in the shade Peachgasm. I sometimes use this as an all over cheek blush. It is 
glorious, but the one that I have seriously fallen in love with because this is so subtle and I do enjoy a subtle highlight that every time you turn your head, there's just a slight pop of highlight. You can't see it from the moon. This is one of those that is so super subtle. You just look like you've got high cheekbones. This is from Givenchy and it's the Prism Libra Skin Caring Highlighter. I have two shades of this. I have the bronze shade and I've also got rose. I'm going to be using rose today because I think it will complement the overall look a little bit more. So I have some on the back of my hand and I'm just going to use my finger to apply that to the high areas of my face. So I think I'm just going to apply it to the tops of my cheekbones today. Applying this before I apply any powder. Look at that. None. Some. <laughs> so I'm going to powder this down just to make it even more subtle still. But I do love this such a nice consistency it blends out really well and you don't have to be too careful with how much you apply which I really like because sometimes highlighter can go so wrong and I get it wrong all the time this one it's impossible to get it wrong up next is powder my under eye powder of choice is from Pat McGrath as always, I haven't found one that rivals this yet. This is the Blurring Under Eye Powder. I'm using my Trigwell Cosmetics sponge and just popping that underneath the eye. If I've got any excess, I will brush that away in just a second. You have to make a funny face. It's the law. Stunning. And then I'm going to go in with an all over powder. Now, my favorite press powder is from NARS. This is the Soft Matte Advanced Perfecting Powder in the shade Cliff, which looks a little bit pale for me, but it seriously works on my skin once it's been applied. The one that I'm going to apply all over my skin, though, is a loose powder. I've actually already tipped some out in the tub. This is from Milk Makeup and um, what is it called again? It's called the Pore Eclipse Translucent Loose Setting Powder. This is magic in a tub. Works exactly the same as the NARS powder, but I just prefer at the moment a loose powder rather than a press powder. Sometimes you can apply a little bit too much press powder, whereas it's difficult to apply too much loose powder. So I'm just going to go in swirling motions, just tap that on. A bit more on my brush. Really swirl your brush in the lid and then knock off any excess. If you're worried about applying too much powder to the skin, that is definitely the way to do it to get less. You're still getting enough, but it's difficult to apply too much if you apply it in that way. And just look how airbrushed everything is and you've still got that pop of highlights and it will come through throughout the day even more, but just airbrushed, smoothed, Gorgeous. I'm going to go back to the Natasha Denona palette and just add a little bit on that lower lash line, not going all the way across because I just prefer to go halfway across. I just think it's more flattering on my eye shape. Just draws attention to that outer corner as well and makes it look a little bit more lifted. Adding too much for me on that lower lash line drags my eye down a little bit, makes everything look a bit sagged. So I just prefer to concentrate on that outer corner. Then to brighten up the eye, I'm going to apply a little bit of the Victoria Beckham Instant Brightening Waterline Pencil. This is just a beautiful shade and it definitely does what it suggests. It instantly brightens that under eye. I mean, look, I've hardly applied any and my eye already looks brightened. So I'm just going to apply a little bit more. I mean, why not? 
Then curling my lashes with my Refa Lash Curler and going straight in with my ultimate favourite concealer, which is the MAC Stack Mega Brush Waterproof Mascara. I do love either a waterproof or a tubing mascara because I've found my skin is getting slightly oilier as I get older, which may be a hormonal issue. I know it's completely the opposite way around for things to normally happen, but that is what's happening to me. And with people that I've spoken to, I've found that that is actually more common than people think. So uh, I need to use a waterproof mascara or a tubing mascara to make sure that when my lashes touch my upper lids, they don't transfer. Look at those, my lashes are full and still fluttery, not clumpy. I've got to say that the Max Stack Mascara Waterproof that I have is well past its best, so I do need to order another one and I will be doing that as soon as I finish filming this today because I love this mascara, but it took a lot longer to apply today because the formula is slightly drier. I've been using a lot of liquid blushes and cream blushes recently, but I'm gonna be using my ultimate favorite powder blush today. This is the Prism Libra blush from Givenchy in the shade 04 Organza Cn. I also have 03 in this as well because these blushes are just gorgeous, but this is my ultimate favorite shade in my ultimate favorite blush. It comes in a pack that has four little pots in there impossible to get out just one of the shades of blush so you have to want to use these together really unless you get some sticky tape and cover the ones over that you don't want to use. I just like to do one little tap in the lid and you get a little bit of product, not too much, not too little. You don't want to over apply this because it's punchy. Then swirl my blush brush, the one that I'm using today is the Refa 04 brush, and then dot on each cheek and just keep going in on each side. You don't want to overload each side. And just keep building that up as you want. I like quite a vibrant blush. You all know me by now. I do go overboard sometimes. You don't need to worry too much about over applying this. You can just get some translucent powder and swirl that over the top to blend everything out seamlessly. And I'll probably do that anyway, even if I don't apply too much of this, but I like to concentrate on the high points of the cheek and then lower it slightly, but we're not going lower cheek because I want to retain that lifted look. Because this blush is a matte blush, it just adds to that airbrushing effect. It doesn't look powdery. If you don't like powder blushes because you feel like it makes your skin look dry, this is not one of those powder blushes that's going to do that to you. I mean, look, it just looks gorgeous. And it's still allowing some of that highlight to poke through underneath the blush. So it still looks a little bit glowy. It's just airbrushed and smoothed and just, oh, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of setting spray. I've mentioned this one on my channel so many times. It's the Laura Mercier Translucent Pure Setting Spray. It's such a great setting spray. One, it works, so it will set your makeup to make sure that it lasts throughout the day, but also, because this is translucent, it doesn't change the look of your makeup. And I really detest those setting sprays that don't say they're going to do that, don't say that they are a glowy setting spray or a radiant setting spray or a mattifying setting spray. And then you apply them and the look that you have just spent ages creating is ruined because it's completely changed the look of your face. Either it's too glowy or it's too matte. This one doesn't change it at all. Don't know where my fan is, so we're gonna have to put up with a bit of pretentious wafting. Then we're gonna move on to lips. Favourite lip liner, same as last year, Victoria Beckham Lip Definer in the shade 2. This is the perfect shade 
for my natural lip color. It's so easy to apply. It's creamy and soft, but it does set down. So if you want to apply this all over the lips as a lip color, it will not budge throughout the day. This has still been intact after 12 hours for me, and I don't find it to be a drying formula, which is a result. These Givenchy lip colors are divine. They are the first liquid lipstick that I don't find overly drying on my lips. These feel like a creamy, nourishing and hydrating lipstick. And even when you take them off, that is the feeling that they still give your lips. Your lips feel well taken care of and they just look lovely on the lips as well. I'm gonna go for the shade 12. The only thing I don't like is the hourglass applicator. Not that it makes it difficult to apply, I just don't understand why it's hourglass shape. I don't think it adds anything to the product, but I do like the end because it's quite precise, but I just wish it was a normal generic applicator with a pointy tip. There are no words to express how much I love this lipstick. My lips are really dry and cracked and flaky at the moment and you would not know now this is on. I mean, my lips just feel super nourished and hydrated and they also look super nourished and hydrated as well, which is a mean feat when your lips are flaking all over the place. I've not been looking after my lips recently, shame on me. So I need to try better in that department. It's a lot of going outside, coming back inside, outside into the freezing cold weather, inside to the central heating and sitting by the fire. You put your lips and your skin through a lot during the autumn, winter months. And um, yeah, I'm suffering the consequences at the moment, but nobody would know. I love this and it's really long lasting, not as long lasting as a regular liquid lipstick, but I can put up with that because regular liquid lipsticks are really drying on my lips and this one definitely isn't. Finally, let's move on to lip oils or lip glosses. If I'm wanting a little bit more hydration throughout the day or I'm wanting my lips to look a little glowier and a little bit fuller, Lip oils and lip glosses are the place to be. So my favorite lip oil has to be from Merit. This is their beautiful signature lip oil, is it? No, it's the Shade and Slick Tinted Lip Oil and it's in the shade Au Naturale. My favorite lip gloss is a new find for me. So this is from City Beauty, it's their City Lips. I have never had a lip gloss on my lips that has lasted this long before. It is a little thick and it can be a little sticky. So it takes some getting used to, but there are a lot of skincare benefits for the lips within the City Lips products. And I definitely know that my lips are well taken care of when I'm wearing this and I love I love the fact that I have that glow for a considerable amount of time. I'm not having to nip into my handbag every five minutes and reapply my gloss. It also doesn't bleed out of the border of my lips because of the thick consistency of this product. So I'm not going to apply this one today. I'm actually going to apply the Merit Tinted Lip Oil. One of my favorite products that they do in their entire range of products is the tinted lip oil. I love this and it just makes my lips feel glorious. So that's my full face of ultimate favorites of 2023. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video as much as I've enjoyed filming it for you. It's been an absolute delight. I woke up really early this morning giddy knowing what I was going to be filming today. There are a couple of other videos to come within this series. So there's my worst of beauty of 2023 and there's also my full face of affordable favorites coming in a few days time. So stay tuned for those. Happy New Year, everybody. I hope 2024 brings you everything you wish for. If nothing else, health and happiness to you and your family. Hope to see you all in the next video. Bye, everyone.